Welcome back, Seth Bling here. The 13W37A snapshot has been released by Mojang, and it's got some very cool new features in it that I'm going to go over in this video. Uh, and I'm going to start off with set block. It's a new command, and it is quite awesome. So it's set block, here's the syntax for that. Uh, you just XYZ, then the tile name, the data value, the block handling type, and then data tag. So for example, you could do set block. And then the coordinates can be relatives. You can say, like, just place it on me. And then the tile name, this is something new. It's, uh, if you actually type it out, you know, you, you can do just one. That would be stone. That's the block ID for stone. And that, that, that'd that be one way to summon the stone block. But you can also do Minecraft colon stone. Uh, let's see. I think you just, probably it's just stone, right? Yeah. And so you can actually type out the name now. You don't have to memorize all the block IDs. And I think this is actually going to be required soon. I think they're going to be taking away the ability to use the, uh, the block IDs. So here's an example of the command uh, set block, and then it's just going to place it one block above the command block. It's going to load up a chest with data value zero. The method of placement is keep. There are three methods, and I'll go over that in a sec. Uh, and then it's going to have this data tag, which is basically the stuff to use for the tile entity. So this is a chest with an item stack in it with five items. Anyway, I press the button. We'll see we get the chest and it's got five apples in it. And um, yeah, if I press the button again, it's going to replace the chest. Uh, actually, this was on keep mode, right? So this is on keep, so it's not going to replace the chest. If I go ahead and just replace this with destroy, you see it actually like breaks the chest. There's particles everywhere. The chest item drops on the ground um, and Oh, well, we got a new chest here. Uh, if I used replace, then it would be pretty similar. Uh, we still get the apples popping on the ground, but the chest doesn't show the breaking particles, and we don't get that um, chest block dropped. So there's that. There's the three method, three methods of using set block: keep, destroy, and place. That's what they do. Okay, so there's some really cool stuff you can do with this. Uh, here I've got. A little lever that will summon and remove a redstone block. So this is a very, very simple method for wireless redstone, which is really cool. I've never had something quite so simple before. You could use scoreboards, but this this doesn't need a clock or anything. This isn't going to cause any lag on your system at all while it's not, you know, while the state isn't being changed. All I'm doing is I'm summoning redstone block and then summoning an air block. Actually, this could be Minecraft colon air, and that would work just as well, too. So, uh, very, very cool that you can have that wireless redstone like that. Uh, now, here, I'm, I'm just going to show you the, uh, oh, yes, there's, um, this is going to summon a button. Block ID 77 is a button. There's some weird behavior here. Uh, it, it, it places the block, but it doesn't update it. So, if it's not, like, up next to another block or something, then you get something like this now. If I'm clicking on this, it doesn't do anything. If I click on this little hitbox here, it, it does break it. Um, it's it's it, it's really weird. I'm not really sure uh, why it has the behavior like it does, but uh, but yeah. So you can do some weird stuff with it that wasn't really possible before without editors. Here's uh, I can summon a water block in midair, and it's just gonna float there. So definitely gonna play around with that. See what kind of stuff you can do there. Uh, here is a little objective tester. So there's a there's a test for a block command, and so this tests if there's a gold block above, and when there isn't, it says objective destroyed, and you can see the comparator output from this is what you use to determine. So you can see as I place and remove the gold block, this comparator turns on and off uh, based on whether or not there's a gold block there. So that's really useful for custom map makers to determine, you know. Uh, have a block like this. That's, it could be floating out anywhere. It doesn't need to be next to the command block or anything, and they can test if the block gets destroyed. So pretty cool. Uh, so <laughs> one of the first things that came to my mind when I saw a set block was something like this, where you have like a parkour course with blinking blocks. So let me go ahead and try it, but it's... Um, here we go. Oh. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. The block's blinking out of existence. It's just these eight command blocks on a little clock that is doing this. Some of these um, spawn in gold blocks, some of them spawn in air, and it just basically swaps in and out which blocks are existing currently. So it's very easy to put something like this together. 
and I used the, the hard-coded coordinates rather than the relative coordinates here. Uh, yeah, very, very cool, very easy, and yeah, you, you can expect to see a lot more from me using the, uh, the slash place. Uh, really easy to make like spleef now. You can just place the, or sorry, slash set block. You can just place the TNT or whatever block you're using for spleef. All right, so there's some other changes, some other additions. Uh, there's this command here. I just have a slash give command pre-typed. And if I hit enter, it's gonna give me an ice cream sandwich. Now the cool thing is you can actually hover over it in the chat menu dialog, whatever, <laughs> and it'll show you all the info for that, like as if you were hovering over it in your inventory. So ice cream sandwich, mmm. And uh, so that's that's kind of cool. Uh, there's also some really, really <laughs> difficult to use, but very useful. Um, there's a new tell raw command. Here it's tell, slash tell raw, and it, it actually will type text in a very weird format. It uses a data format called JSON, J-S-O-N, which is used in JavaScript, um, it's a JavaScript object something, and, and so, okay, so this is command, this is a command that's really cool, this is, this does something you couldn't do before, if I push the button, let me actually clear out a spot here, and, uh, okay, if I push the button, it'll pop up this text in my, in my chat, and I can actually, you can see this is a button, this okay here, uh, it has hover text, and if I click on it, it'll give me an apple. So, it does this basically by allowing the player to run a command when they click on the text. So because I'm an op, I can use the slash give Seth Bling Apple command. But uh, if I, it, yeah, if I wasn't a, um, an op, then, I, then this command wouldn't do anything. So it's a little bit limited in that you can't do things that ops couldn't do if you're not an op. So you can't really use this in maps, I would say, to like modify a scoreboard or use the slash give command because usually the player won't have uh, ha won't have those privileges uh, or they should <laughs> or they can cheat so it's a little bit limited here's a command that dinnerbone sent to me uh, it's pretty similar um, but it does show some different features it's so you hover over it it actually will show you the item that you'll get by clicking on it and when I click you can see I get the item here it's dinner's bone and it has basically just a custom name and so it uses more of this custom JSON uh, structure stuff. I, I've put bo links to both of these commands in the video description if you want to see the full text. Now Dinnerbone has told me that he's going to be uh, writing a blog post next week about, uh, about the format for that um, because it's actually very complicated and <laughs> it's very hard to write by hand as well, but it's so flexible that it's definitely worth it worth learning how to do it if you're someone who you know makes custom apps or runs a server okay so the last thing you've probably seen it <laughs> by now uh, the portals you can now have them be much much bigger <laughs> I think you can have them be like I don't remember the exact the exact specifications like 23 by 40 or something it's very big the, the the point is though that you can actually get ghasts to go through these portals so you can now get ghasts into the overworld by uh, by luring them into these portals. So that's really quite cool. Uh, that's something you definitely couldn't do before. And otherwise, you know, it's also you can decorate differently with these. I think it still has to be at least as big as the old portals, but uh, but now you can make it much bigger. So that's pretty cool. Well, definitely expect to see a lot from me on <laughs> on set block and 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 using the uh, the new chat features. I think they're really cool and and they open up a lot of new possibilities that just were not available before. Uh, you can check out in the video description, there's a link to the changelog for 13W37A, and thanks for watching.